Okay, so now he set up the debit card in PayPal and he confirmed his email address, which is re required if it's a new or an old account and you have any notifications up here, you should click those notifications. A lot of time there's confirmation requests pending uh, for you to get full access to your PayPal account. So now uh, Shaka is gonna go to the settings in Coinbase again, um, and he's gonna add a payment method and he's gonna click PayPal. And this works best if you're already logged into your PayPal account uh, you're get, he, uh, Coinbase, just like PayPal, just like any legitimate financial company, logs you out after inactivity. Once you finally succeed in typing the password correctly, you press and you press the sign in. Everything goes through. Then there's another option um, that says "Don't ask me again for like 30 days," um, which is not the safest thing if it's. Um, not a secured location. Um, it's always important that you do have the two-step verification set up, whether it's via text message or via Google Authenticator. Uh, personally, I like using Google Authenticator. I just think it's fun, um, but it's also more reliable because if your internet connection is not, especially when your internet connection is not stable um, and you're doing it a lot, it makes more sense. Like if you have like a whole bunch of decentralized apps, like uh, again, I was testing out a lot of sites uh, back in December and January. Okay, so, and a lot of centralized exchanges specifically. So we're gonna add a payment method and we're going to choose PayPal. And since we're still logged into PayPal, this should be one of the more seamless. Oh yeah, you got to click here, options, and allow pop-ups from Coinbase. <clears throat> With Google, the button's going to be over here. I think Safari's buttons are over here in that area. Or it might be this. Click here. Allow. Oh, leave it there. Um, okay, press try again, actually. Bismillah. Okay, accept. And agree and continue. And uh, just as a refresher, if uh, we did mention it in the last one, then it's just completely uh, the first time. What we're trying to do is buy the most amount as quickly as possible, uh, especially because that's just, you know, when you're bringing people in, you want people who are investing a lot of money uh, because they're getting the most benefit. Um, and, you know, it helps you out. It, it helps their family out because they're going to be multiplying more money more quickly. Um, okay, so now that we have PayPal set up and we go to press the buy sell button, um, we might have lifted the uh, maxim. Uh, so Lex, yeah, see now it says you could buy up to $25,000 before this said zero. You've exceeded your weekly limit. So go ahead and change that Bitcoin to USDC. And we're going to keep this pay with with PayPal. And then you're going to type in that two G's that you was talking about earlier. And we're going to review the buy. And we are going to buy now. It's a huge fee. It'd be more with um, Cash App. Like pe people legit get charged twenty five dollars for like two hundred or something or three hundred. Okay, so now um, we're going to be able to go to your portfolio. Click on the uh, USDC 
which you just gotta scroll down a little bit. Uh, or you could press trade, I think that's easier, but yeah, you could click here, uh, one or the other. Um, scroll down and uh, enable sending and press that dismiss thing so you have more screen room. Verify your account. And this is where it asks for your identification. Uh, if you have a driver's license, go ahead and you, you can upload it. Uh, you're gonna need to enable the, um, do you have a webcam on your, on your PC? Oh. Yeah. Oh, where is this? Where is this license? Maybe I have a photo. Yeah, you just need a photo. So you can press driver's license and then upload that photo. And you could like email it to your uh, self and then download it onto the PC. Oh man! All right, I'm gonna pause the recording for a second. I'm gonna take a quick pit stop and be right back. Okay, so we went to, because we're doing this all in Firefox, which is actually the best browser that I know of, um, uh, without getting into like ridiculous security privacy ones. Um, so it's addons.mozilla.org, and then you can use the find add-ons over here and type in hotspot shield, um, or you can use any VPN you prefer. I just, I offer this to all my clients. So you can press add. Um, and you press OK. And now um, the extension interface loads. Uh, we'd, we're just going to close this tab. And then we're going to click here. And I'm going to type in the credentials. So everybody can use these credentials. Um, not hiding anything here. Uh, we press the next button like three times or four times or whatever. Um, and then we press done. And the next step after that is to say, got it. And now we go here um, and we go to sign in. And let me get to typing so it's faster. Okay. Uh, yeah, if you stop moving your mouse, I can type. Okay. And then we uh, go over here to the settings. We want to enable all this stuff because it's cool but especially the web RTC blocker. That's the most important one. Um, but this is how you, the um, nobody can get around. Uh, you basically have a firewall built into this. It's really cool. So when they can't get around the firewall, they're forced to, oh, I forgot to press uh, Great Britain. Where is Great Britain? Oh, we need to scroll down. There it is. UK might. And... Okay, and then, yeah, now the configuration set up and we press uh, start and now we're location spoofing in London. And we don't need these open. Okay, so now, even though we get this error message because we're in one of these countries that um, restricts um, Binance from operating, um, there's some crypto, international crypto law, I forget, uh, that only these nations care about. Um, so now we don't have that error message anymore. Um, we're not doing TRX network, so we're going to switch the TRX network to ERC20 uh, or Ethereum. Yep, click Ethereum. And we're going to connect wallet. Uh, 
and we're going to press yeah binance smart chain wallet and we're going to press connect <clears throat> and then we're going to press asset and we're going to uh, click here and we're going to search for usd and then c yep cha-ching uh, and we're going to press this button over here. Oh, so yeah, we can do, we have to basically, what it's saying here from uh, the Ethereum from network has to uh, coincide with the current network um that you're logged into over here so we need to switch this um to ethereum and now it's happy so it um oh you know what like some um, change wallet I think we actually don't need the Binance wallet now that I remember this correctly. I used to do this all the time with Tron where you had, it was like really the best way to go. Okay, now USDC will show up. Um, oh yeah, you know what? This this can work very easily. All right, let's keep this here. Let's copy this. Um, let's go back to the portfolio. You're probably going to need to enter your, um, so we're pasting that address from there in here. And then we're pressing continue. And now it's gonna ask for the password as I was expecting. So go ahead and enter that wonderful password and email address, and then click sign in. And then it's probably gonna ask you to do the two-factor authentication, uh, authentication with um, SMS. Actually, you can, um, Click this button here, do the drop down, and then it will never ask you again. Yeah, never save for this website. Um, <clears throat> and you can do that for every single website that you ever log into. They can Write it down, take a picture. <laughs> I think I'm done. No, no, no. No, no, no. I don't want to do that. Come on, just reset it to a password you're actually going to remember. I use something like a similar password for everything, but I just switch it up so I just don't know which one I use for which. So Google Password Manager and pretty much any password manager worth its weight will alert you when there's a breach um, compromising things. Granted, it's usually, you know, like a week or two after the breach, but they're not going onto every website with every single one of the credentials that they stole. You already put in the forget your password thing ready to go. Didn't you just set this? No, I, I, I put in um I put in the password already, but the dang thing logged out. I said two verifications. Oh, so you never reset the password? Mm -hmm. So do it. Bro, this is like a half hour. Listen, I, I get it. It's late, bro. Come on, just reset it. Make it the same thing as that. So be just like, okay, I know what it is when I'm trying to do this crypto 
stuff.